Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and I am quickly approaching my one year anniversary and if I don't get my wife something, I'm gonna be in the doghouse. Now, if you follow the traditional gift giving etiquette, the first year anniversary, you're supposed to give your partner a paper, which sounds really, really boring. And so I was thinking, what if I created a custom photo album with the best pictures from our wedding and gave that to my wife, maybe even a custom anniversary card. Wouldn't that be way better than just giving her standard paper? And so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I have teamed up with Sal Digital to help make this happen. And so hopefully after the break here, you're going to see a really emotional, grand, epic reveal of this album to my wife, hopefully. But if not, I'm still going to show you how I created this and why you should be offering photo albums to your own clients. Let's get right to it. Do you know what the very first present is? Paper. Aww. Does this come out? Yeah, pull that up. Whoa, what is this? This is huge. Yeah, you can put it on top. Close, oh, pull it out. Oh, use your strength, it's heavy. Oh, <laughs> you have only been working on this. Aww. You can't do this right now. I'm messing my makeup. This day is so special. I can't, I'm still like in shock. Of what, the book? That we're married. No, oh, well that too. That too. Why do you have a mic on? I'm because married. you've been recorded this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get your reaction of opening the book. We gotta go to that. I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. All right, so here we are two weeks prior to that. I hope the reaction was what I was expecting. Let me go ahead and talk to you about how I created this album, but before I do that, I wanna talk about albums in general. Now, if you have followed my career at all, I used to be a wedding photographer full-time for 12 years. That was my sole income. And at the time, I thought making wedding albums was a big pain in the butt, and I actually kind of discouraged clients from ordering them from me. My whole spiel was, why don't you spend as much money on the photography now, get the most amount of coverage, get the photo booth, get the video service, get all the stuff, and then later, when you have maybe an extra budget added, you can add the album then. And my whole goal was never to have to do that album because in my mind, albums took a lot of time. Back when I was shooting weddings, there wasn't a lot of software that could really design these quickly and easily. And so I thought, let me just make as much money up front and then give the images to my clients. And then if they made their own album, it was actually saving me a lot of time. Looking back, I think that was a huge business mistake. Even if I hired an assistant to help with the album making process, I think I left tens of thousands of dollars of profit on the table. And uh, I really wish I would have done more albums in the past. So don't do my mistake. Make sure you're offering your clients albums, find an album company that you really like and make a very streamlined system so that you can make albums as effortlessly as possible. Today, we're gonna to be using Sal Digital. Now, if you wanna know more about the psychology behind what an album should look like, whether or not you're making a portfolio album for yourself or a show album to show your clients, or if you're gonna be making a, a wedding album like I'm doing today, Mike Kelly and Lee Morris did an excellent video on our channel. I'll put the link in the description below. They go through kind of the thought process behind making a show album for say a commercial client if you're an architectural photographer versus if you're a wedding photographer and you're trying to portray either a full wedding or the highlight reel of your best images from a wedding. Definitely check that out. I'm just gonna go through kind of what I wanna do with my own album here and I'm gonna show you quickly how easy this is to design. And then once we get this album designed, hopefully Sal's gonna get it to me in time so that I can deliver this for my anniversary on October 10th and I'm gonna be able to open it up beforehand and show you some of the features uh, that I implemented in this own design. Now, since this is a sponsored post, we do have a discount code in the description below where Sal Digital is gonna give you 50% off. If you're making your first show album for yourself, this is gonna save you a ton of money. Or if you need to make an album for a client, this is gonna keep a little bit more money in your pocket by increasing your margins. So definitely use the link in the description below. So if we go to sal-digital.com, you can see their homepage here. They offer a bunch of different products. Since I'm going to be ordering a photo album, I'm also gonna put in a few other orders. We have a baby due in a few months. So I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, some thank you cards for some gifts that we've received from friends of ours for the baby. 
And I'm also gonna do a custom anniversary card that I can give my wife either at the same time as the photo album, or maybe I give it to her at the special dinner that we're gonna have. Now there's a few things that I want in this album for me personally, and one of them is I don't want any kind of logos from the print company. I don't want this to be an advertisement for them. And so all of the products from Sal come with a no manufacturer logo policy, which I think is great. And then the second thing that I really want is I want an album that when you open it, the pages lay flat and allow a photo to bleed all the way across the spread. I think this is called like a gutter. A typical book has this area where the pages kind of go in and then it either warps the prints or you're left with a white, you know, bleed right there that, you know, interrupts the spread of the photo. So I wanna make sure I get the lay flat binding. And then because this is a wedding album, I also want some kind of awesome case that makes the book feel substantial, it protects it, it gives you that wow factor so that when my wife opens it up, it's gonna be like, oh wow, this thing's huge and big. And then you open the protective case and then the book sits inside of it. So they offer that as well. Now, if I go down here, there's a bunch of different uh, books that they have, different formats. You can see all the different sizes here. The first thing I need to choose is do I want a tall book, like a vertical book, or do I want a landscape book? So I will have to make that decision here in a minute. Here's the lay flat binding. You can see how the photos spread all the way across. I think that looks really, really nice. And of course we have a bunch of different covers that we could use, different materials, different leatherettes. They have some wood looks, cork, linen, and then we have a bunch of different papers that we can use. For this book, I wanna use the XT, the extra thick paper, which is going to be kind of like a cardboard stock and it's gonna make the pages rigid and make them feel more substantial. If you were doing, you know, maybe a senior portrait book or something that was a little bit less uh, glamorous, maybe you could just go with normal paper. But for this, I want this to be heavy, substantial. I want this to feel like, whoa, I'm about to relive the whole wedding day and I wanna give as much emotion and energy, you know, like a high-end quality as possible. So what I'm most nervous about and also most excited about is I need to use the Sal Digital software because I am horrible as a designer. I don't like dealing with bleeds and spreads and margins and getting pictures to line up perfectly and I'm always gonna have it off by a little pixel and it's gonna drive me crazy. So that was the number one reason why I didn't like designing albums to begin with is because I just never wanted to have to design them myself but I've heard the Sal Design software is really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this for Windows now I can open this up and the way that this works is they put a bunch of their products on the right hand side and then on the left hand side you can save your products, you can see your shopping basket, you have an account, you have settings. So let's go ahead and hit photo books here and the album I have decided on is the professional line photo books with that XT paper, that extra thick paper. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to just go for the biggest one. Let's go for the 16 by 12. I believe that's going to be a pretty big book and then you got to remember when it opens up it's going to be you know, twice the width. Now with this album, you have two different options. You can do entirely the leatherette look where it's just completely covered in a faux leather type of material. Or the second option is you can have the back covered with leatherette, but then the front will be a substantial piece of acrylic and then you can have a really glossy print on front. I'm gonna go with the acrylic and leatherette look. Now when it comes to finishes, I love a black book. I feel like black just screams class and it doesn't get dirty and it looks like a wedding album. So. I want to do black leatherette, but I know my wife likes white and airy, and that was kind of the theme of our wedding. So for the sake of this video, I'm actually going to order two of these albums. Maybe I'll be able to give one away to my family or keep it in our house in Puerto Rico, and I'll let my wife choose which one is her favorite. I definitely don't want to get the wrong thing because she's not involved in the design of this at all. So. Uh, maybe it's smart to go ahead and order both and then I'll be able to show you guys on camera the differences and maybe you'll have an opinion on which one you like better. So for this one, I'm going to go with black leatherette. And then for the paper, I think I'm going to go with matte paper. I just like the way matte looks. I've always preferred matte over glossy. It's just a personal preference. Gift box, we're going to go ahead and do the black leatherette as well. And then barcode, I don't exactly know what that is. I'm just going to hit no barcode. Let's go ahead and hit design. And now we have the option of doing an empty template where you can design the album completely on your own. That sounds like my biggest anxiety ever, so I'm not going to do that. We have the one minute photo book, which feels like it might be a little too automated. And then we have the comfort designer, which is the one they're recommending here. And this is going to allow me to build a layout, but then I can choose the photos as we go along. So let's hit let's go. And then you can see we have a lot of options here. I'm trying to go as classy and simple as possible, so I'm not gonna use any clip art. I think I like the big margins. 
Yeah, I don't know how many pages. Let's just go ahead and start with 22. And so now when I look at this, you can see my black leatherette here on the left. And then now I need to choose an image for the cover. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my wedding photos here. Now, I got to give a little plug to our wedding photographer. We got married in Miami and we were looking at a bunch of wedding photographers. And as a wedding photographer, you know, I'm pretty picky on who I'm going to have shoot my wedding. There was two or three that we narrowed it down to, but there was one that really, really stood out. And her name is Lenise Kumatsu. I'm going to put her link in the description too. Lenise was amazing. Lenise, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for the photos. Like these are great. Everyone's about to see them. I could not be happier. And as a wedding photographer saying that to another wedding photographer, you know how sincere I am with that because I feel like our standards are really, really high. She did an amazing job. So let me go ahead and open up these images. And here is a great pose photo that we did in the front of the church that I think is going to look awesome as the cover. So we'll just drag this in and see what it does. And now I need to drag this and make it big. Look how easy that is. I mean, this was not quite as simple 10, 15 years ago when I was doing wedding photography. And so I think I'm going to crop this kind of off center to really show off the veil there. I think that looks great there. So this is going to be the cover of the album. And now I assume if I go to page two and three, this is going to be the first page that opens up. I want the left side to be black. How can I do that? Up here is an add fill button. Eh, look at that. So I don't know if this is going to be like paper or if this is going to be photo paper as well. I don't know what this material is going to be made out of, but let's go ahead and hit edit fill. And oh, we got it over here. Let's make that black. That looks really cool. So this area here on the right is going to be the first impactful photo that you see when you open the book. So let me go ahead and open my photos again. And I think I want to go with this image. This was a really cool photo that she used the veil to kind of frame up the bottom part of the frame here. So I want to make that really big. So now I need to go to page three and four and I can choose different layouts here on the right. Let's make some kind of collage. My thought here, this is something that I can do that Lenise couldn't easily do. I guess I could send her pictures, but I thought it would be kind of cool to have the first page be some of our engagement photos and maybe some of our dating photos. I know that's not really traditionally how a wedding album is, but this is one of the advantages that you have on making your own. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if I just click any one of these. I don't know. This is the one I'm going to use, but you can see over here on the right side, I have these options to make all of these different layouts. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time throwing some of my favorite images from our dating life and our engagement photos that we had both in Puerto Rico and in Charleston, South Carolina. And my thought is just, you know, the very first page will be our dating life. And then the next one will be the wedding itself. All right. So it's been about an hour, hour and a half later. I've gone ahead and just designed the whole album. I just kind of got in this rhythm and I just thought, you know, let me just design the whole thing and then walk you guys through it. A video like this is not going to be fun watching me throw different pictures in. So here is the first page with all of the dating photos. I love this image here of us walking the dog in old San Juan. This was an engagement shoot that we did right before our wedding. And so I went ahead and made this image like a full bleed photo on the right. And then here on the left, I used an engagement photo from our friend Lauren Jonas, who used to work with us here at F Stopper. She's an incredible wedding photographer here in Charleston. She did our engagement photos back when we were in South Carolina. And then I have a picture of the day we got engaged. I have one of my favorite Halloween photos, the day that we got the dog. This was these pictures up here were like the first pictures we had when we first met. So I just thought this would be really cool to add these really personal photos into the front of the album. And then now if I go, I can hit this little arrow here to see the next page. Here we jump right into the album. Now there's different approaches that you could do in designing a wedding album. And the most logical one just is a chronological layout. So that's what I've done here. So here's a great photo that Lenise took where, you know, just everything's laid out. It looks really clean and it documents all of the little details that we spent so much time designing. And then on the right side, I have put, uh, you know, the dress, the rings, and then some other little uh, detail shots that were important to Kristen. And I'm just going to quickly walk through this. So, you know, here's kind of the storytelling of, you know, here's the view out of the bridal suite. And then this is Kristen getting her makeup and her bridesmaids. And then here we have her reading the letter. We have her with every bridesmaid. 
One thing that I really appreciate that Lenise did a great job in is any good wedding photographer should be thinking of either a slideshow or a video or an album and making sure that they have taken all of the pictures that tell the story. So here in this layout, I have a picture of every bridesmaid with Kristen. So there was no hiccups where uh, somebody was left out or there was a picture that really didn't turn out great. Lenise did an excellent job of making sure it would be really easy to build a page like this. Funny little story, when I took my wife to the hotel after the wedding was all done, all this confetti was everywhere. And so I spent the first 30 minutes of my honeymoon cleaning up confetti. Now we have the guys getting ready. So here we are with all the groomsmen. Here I am putting on the tie, my dad helping me out with you know the handkerchief and everything. Now, as I'm going through this, you can see I'm already on page 17 and 18, and I had no idea how many pages I needed for an album. I thought, oh, this is gonna be like 22, 24 pages, right? Well, as you'll see, I quickly got up to, I think, 42 pages with this book. So here we go with the ceremony. Again, we're just telling the story. Kristen about to walk into the church. Here's my reaction. Here she is walking with her mom. And then this page was kind of all of the uh, speakers that we had, you know, reading different verses and stuff like that. And for this page, I decided to have a picture of me reading my vows. And then the second picture was Kristen giving me the ring. There's so many great images. It was really, really difficult to pick out the best ones and really make this concise because you could go crazy and have a hundred page book. And then we also had multiple images of the first kiss, which is great. Sometimes you only get one of those. That's probably the most nerve wracking part of shooting a wedding. But Lenise and her team, I mean, there's like six different angles. I don't know how they did it, but it was really fun being able to go through all of the first kiss images and picking the one that really had the vibe that I wanted. Now this one does spread over to the second page. So I'll be curious to see how that comes across when we print it. And then I also played around with having, you know, no borders at all. So for this image here of our departure, I didn't do a border at all. So I'll be curious to see how that prints. And then I did some really strange tight vertical panels here and just use some of the images that uh, we did right outside the church. I think that looks really cool. It's really fun to play around with the crop. I know as a photographer, you try to get everything perfect in camera and it's always that two to three ratio or maybe a four to five ratio, but it's kind of fun to put these really strange, long, narrow images and see how you can arrange them. If you're using a platform like TikTok, maybe you're used to vertical pictures all the time. I'm not, so it was really fun to go through and make some different crop decisions. And then Kristen and I did a really crazy entrance with a, a pretty planned out dance that we did. So here's the first dance and we have some great photos of that. And then a bunch of speeches. I tried to capture everyone that either did a prayer or gave a speech. And then my favorite image of that is me looking at her as she's responding to one of her bridesmaids. So what I'm trying to do here is there's so many images that are great. I would see all of these photos during the speeches and I'm like, man, these are great, great photographs, but you can't obviously put them all into a single book. So I constantly go back to which images make the bride look the best and which images have the most energy and the most emotion poured into them. So an image like this, you know, it's great because my mom's got a good expression and then I'm looking at my wife and I'm smiling and then Kristen obviously is having an emotional response. Something like this just tells a story really, really well and it kind of pulls all of these other images together. These other images are important. It's showing everybody giving the speeches, but on their own, none of them are like, printable. They're not going to be an image that you print and put on your wall, but in a layout like this, I think this really tells the story. So if you're designing somebody else's wedding album, this is going to be a skill that you really want to master. How do you use emotion to help pull together all of these important photos that might be a little less emotional, but then you have something like a payoff image where it kind of brings it all together. I feel like this spread really does that really, really well. I also created a really crazy photo booth that we ran. And so I thought, you know, we gotta put some photo booth pictures in here. There were so many photo booth pictures that I think, you know, sometimes if they're all really small, they don't have the most impact. And so for this, I wanted to make one really, really large image. This one has my friend, Nick Milak, who's a character. He's kicking up above Peter Hurley's head. And then you got Mike Kelly in the background. This just has a ton of energy. I feel like it really uh, showcases what the photo booth is all about. For the right side of the page, I tried to include images of guests that may not make all of the dancing photos, but I also wanted a mix of images that are really wild and outrageous too, so that this one spread of the photo booth has the most impact. And side note, if you're not offering a photo booth at your weddings, this is one of the easiest money makers possible. There's a ton of different ways to build your photo booth, but I was charging a thousand to $1,400 just for the photo booth. And once you set that up, it can just run in the background 
You have to check up on it every now and then. You can send an assistant over there to help, but it's an easy thousand dollars that you can add to your wedding packages, and it's really one of the easiest things possible. And then at the end of the wedding, I surprised my wife by playing a song with the band. I got her up on stage. I got this crazy guitar for the wedding and played Purple Rain, which was the final song that she heard when she put on her wedding dress. And over her life and over our dating life, that, that song has really been important. And so played Purple Rain at the wedding. How cool is that? So I got this page here. It's a montage of that whole experience. And then we get to the departure. We have so many cool pictures of us leaving. So that one was really hard to pick out, but I went with this full page spread here and then the final kiss and getting in the car. And then for the last page, I chose this more casual portrait that Lenise took outside at the cocktail hour. I really didn't see another place in the book where you know some of these pose pictures could go. I didn't want to make the whole book pose pictures of us. So I thought this was just a great final image. And then I went ahead and filled the back with black. So this album here wound up being 42 pages. It's $500, which in the big scheme of things, I mean, there's some wedding albums out there that can easily approach $1,000, which means you need to charge maybe $1,500, maybe $2,000 to make a profit for your time and effort put into it. This one's $500, but keep in mind, if you use the link in the description below, you can save 50% off your first album. So there's the photo album. I went ahead and designed a second one too that also has the white leatherette. So it's exactly the same album. It's just, it's gonna come with a different finish. And then I've also designed just a few thank you cards for the baby that's coming in November. So here is a card. I did use some of the graphics that they designed. So, you know, you can use some clip art. This one is uh, our son's name is going to be Hudson. So Hudson Hall, if I open this up, um, you know, very, very simple little card. So I made like 20 or 30 of these just so that my wife has something with his name on it. We don't know the delivery date yet, so I can't put that in there, but I've ordered some of those. And then I also made a anniversary card as well. So super easy. What I love about this software is just how simple it is. You can save it to the cloud so that you can access it in different places. And uh, overall, this was as easy as possible for somebody who is horrible at design and hates building albums. So there you go. The next time you see me, I'm going to have the books in my possession. I'm going to open them before she sees them. We'll go through it and just see how the final thing turned out. And this is going to be a really, really cool anniversary gift. I'm super excited about this. I don't think I've ever been excited about an album except the, the show album that I made when trying to sell clients on my services. And then now this anniversary album that I'm creating with my own wedding. All right, it's about a week later. I just got the package. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see what this album looks like. <laughs> All right, so this is the natural linen book that I made. And ooh, look at that. All right, so we pull this to open. And this one's got the white leatherette siding. That looks really nice. I'm just gonna actually keep this right here. And that is awesome looking. It's got that glossy finish. That looks great. Look at this. This is exciting. Wow, these pages, they feel awesome. The prints look really, really good. Oh boy, Kristen is going to love this. This lay flat binding looks awesome. The pictures spanned really well. Colors look great. Full prints look great. And this album, man, if I had to guess, this is like 10, 15 pounds. So that is the first album. And let's check out the other one. All right, and here is the second album. Now, I didn't show this on the first album, but when these ship, they do come with this plastic protective piece that you have to peel off. And that just protects this acrylic front. And then just like the other one, you pull this up. And you can see this whole book is the black leatherette, which I think looks really, really classy. I really like this one, but I think my wife is going to like this linen cover. And we have the exact same album. So really, really cool. I guess I should have probably gotten a different paper, but I love this mat. This looks really good, but it would be kind of interesting to know what the other papers look like. Maybe they offer a sample pack so you could tell, uh, you know, a difference. But again, I think being a big fan of matte paper, I am going to always go for this option. So yeah, these feel great. Um, I, I love them both. I think they're really, really nice. I kind of feel like the black leatherette 
feels, it just, it feels a little bit more like a wedding album. This one's cool too. I think my wife might prefer this one. This might be the album that I actually give her. Of course, if you're this far into the video, you've already seen her reaction. Hopefully she falls in love with these. And then I'm going to surprise her and let her know that we actually have two albums. So I think this is kind of like the male or the groom's book. And then this one is kind of a cool option for the bride. But uh, you definitely can choose the one that you like the most. If you guys enjoy this kind of content or just want to get general photography content, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. We're very close to hitting a million subscribers, which was our goal for this year. And uh, we would definitely appreciate that. It helps the algorithm and of course helps us make more videos like this. If you're a photographer and you're looking to get into the wedding genre or really any genre at all, we have some extremely in-depth tutorials. Head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out the tutorial Lee and I made on wedding photography. It's I don't even know, 10 or 12 hours on everything that we know from shooting the rings to the detail shots, to the departure, the cake cutting, how to light inside the reception hall. We literally cover a little bit of everything. Or if you're into other genres like architecture, landscapes, headshots, swimwear, macro photography, we have tutorials from other photographers that are very in depth as well. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm excited to get this package wrapped up and surprise my wife. I gotta get ready though because we have a dinner in a few hours and I gotta get this all set up so that I can get her reaction. I will see you guys very, very soon. <laughs>